In this video, we see the graph of cos inverse x, that is cosine inverse x. In the previous video, we have seen the graph of sine inverse x. Now we have the graph of cos inverse x. A reminder that the graph of a trigonometric function will be possible for inverse if and only if the function is 1, 1 on 2, that means it is bijective. And a function is bijective only when we restrict the domain of a periodic function. Remember we studied that sin x, cos x, these are many one functions. If we keep on drawing the graph of cos x, we will find that for many values, I obtain one answer, one value in the range. So it becomes many one, but then the inverse doesn't exist. So I have to see what? I have to see which branch to take what to restrict so that my inverse is possible. I have here described the graph for the section 0 to pi and we will be drawing the graph again accordingly only. Let's start with the graph of cos x and then let's start with the graph of cos inverse x. Now let's see. I have x axis and y axis. The graph is of cos x. Cos 0 is what? Cos 0 is 1. I know where is 0? 0 is here. Where is 1? 1 is here. So cos 0 will give me 1. What about the next value? What is cos 90? Cos 90 is 0. So cos pi by 2 is 0. Cos pi by 2 is 0. One more dot. What is cos pi? Cos pi means cos 180. How to find out cos 180? So it is cos 90 plus 90. We have already seen the computation of values in our class plus 1. So what is cos pi from there? Cos pi is nothing but as minus 1. Minus 1 is here. I just look at it and I just draw a dot. Now my task is to join these dots to get a graph. Let's join and get a graph. So the graph is something like this. The graph of cos x. It is not the whole graph. It is just a small section of the graph. 0 to pi is the branch. Now, when cos x is drawn, how to draw cos inverse x? Cos inverse x drawing is very simple. You just need to change some things. What things to be changed? Make the x axis as y axis. x axis is where? x axis is 0 and pi is given. It becomes now your y axis. 0 and pi, these things 0, pi by 2 pi come on to your y axis. Done. Next step is what? Next step is make y axis as your x axis. Where is y axis? Y axis is the vertical one. 0, minus 1 and 1. It becomes your x axis. x axis is 0, minus 1 and 1. Two steps done. What is the third step? Third step is to draw the mirror image or the reflection about the line y is equal to x. Now let's see how to draw y is equal to x. y is equal to x is simply what? A straight linear line having the angle of 45 degrees with the x-axis. So y is equal to x is nothing but a straight linear line, right? This is y is equal to x. Now I have to understand that I have to draw the reflection about this line to get the graph of cos inverse x from cos x, right? This is y is equal to x. I have the curve above it. I have to draw the curve in another manner. Now the reflection would be what? Let's see. I have the line y is equal to x. I have to just follow the simple rule that the line y is equal to x is my standard line. Reflection about this would give me the inverse. Whatever is above becomes below. Whatever is below becomes above. 0 and 1 above on the side first quadrant will shift towards the left side because in mirror you know the principle that left becomes right and right becomes left. So if it is on the first quadrant it should be somewhere here in the second quadrant and if it is bulging rightwards it should bulge leftwards. This is the simple principle. So the things which are bulging leftwards becomes bulging rightwards, right side becomes left side, the first criteria. And what about something which is here? It is very simple. 
that something which is on the quadrant number let's see the what is the quadrant number the quadrant number is downwards the mirror in which or the lateral inversion will be actually what will be actually shifting its position now i have the area here 0 to pi and here it is minus 1 for cos inverse minus 1 and pi by 2 have to be related so i have minus 1 here we, the, we will be following the graph instructions pi by 2 to minus 1 have to be joined here I will join pi by 2 to 1 why we are doing this it is very simple that pi by 2 to 1 was drawn earlier in the domain part and now it becomes the range part similarly minus 1 to pi by 2 was drawn here minus 1 to pi by 2 we are just interchanging x-axis and y-axis. Where pi by 2 was on the x-axis, now pi by 2 was, is on the y-axis. Where minus 1 is on the y-axis, here minus 1 is on the x-axis. So the criteria is very simple. Draw the mirror image. If you don't get the idea of mirror image, just interchange the x-axis and the y-axis. So in this video, we saw the graph of cos inverse x. In the next video, we'll be seeing the graph of tan inverse x.